How's it? And thanks for joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners. What a night we've got coming up this Saturday night at Albion Park. It's night two of the Tab Summer Carnival and we've got a very special edition of Weekend Winners coming your way. The boys are back in town with me, Darren Clayton, Ryan Spice, and we've got feature racing galore this Saturday night. Darren Clayton, night one last week, it was an entree because this Saturday night promises to be bigger and better. It sure does, and we've, we saw the horses last week, the Trot, Kingdom Come, a big knockout winner, the other race, the Beagle Johnny Sprint, Black Sedans, only did what he had to do and controlled that race really well. Both the races this week, the Trotters and the Pacers, chasing that golden ticket in a Dominion ballot exemption, so that's going to be a really great spectacle tomorrow night. Yeah, absolutely. Ron, there's a lot to look forward to here, and I think a few races look fairly clear cut, but on the other hand, some just look absolute raffles. Chris, couldn't agree more. Deep races, going to be competitive racing. Um, a lot of the races were very difficult to assess and to sort out. We've got the Queensland Cup and Tab have come to the party. We've got a first ball jackpot of $20,000. So that projected pool is tipped to exceed $50,000 and it's well worth playing. It's the open class stars. We know these horses well. Turn it up, Mac Da Vinci, Black Sedans, they look to be the big three, but there's a few others there that certainly could get uh, into the picture with a little bit of luck. So there is a first four jackpot on the Queensland Cup. That's a group two race and that's race number seven. We're going to preview these races and a whole lot more in just a moment. The first of our features on Saturday night is the Bill Dixon, named after the iconic Queensland trainer, the Queensland Hall of Famer. And last year, this race was won by the Grant Dixon Stable. It was Mayorka that proved successful, as we now know. She's in North America and doing wonderful things. Darren, as I come to you, interestingly, when you look back at last year's Bill Dixon, Mayorka contested the peak of the creek. We've only got one horse backing up from last week's peak of the creek, and that's the strongly fancied Brigadier's son. So, is that the right formula? You're looking for horses coming out of the peak of the creek, backing up into the Bill Dixon. Considering they're the same grade, basically, of race, Chris, I think it is. I think the one horse that is backing up comes up with the perfect gait, Brigadier's son. He comes up with the right form. In the heat of uh, the peak of the creek, he charged home along the inside after he was buried away, got into the final. His final run was really good, parked out. He worked hard in the run, it was good time, so I can't see any reason why he's not the horse to beat in this race. He just comes up with all the, all the favours from the gate and um, with that speed map in mind, high voltage, he draws wide in gate six. We know he charges the gate from out there. They probably have to go forward, get across. Brigadier Sun would probably be quite happy to take a sit on him. We saw high voltage set up the, the really slick tempo at Menangle, two runs back where Better Isolate got off his back, home in, uh, they've, they've run sub 150 in that. He again set the speed in the, in the final of that race. So he gets forward. They probably position up there, thereafter where they go. A little bolt, he sticks to the inside. Probably a really good spot for him to a peak of glory. Probably wants to stick to the pegs as well. And, and then they just fill their spots in the running line wherever they sort of roll across to. So in that regard, from a speed map, I, that's how I saw it, and with that in mind, I think Brigadier Sun looks really hard to beat. Okay, Ryan, do you agree with that map? And I'm interested in your thoughts here on high voltage, because as Darren outlined, he comes back from Sydney contesting the Breeders' Challenge, beaten by a horse that you've got a, a piece of in a better isolate. So, do you sort of map it the same way? He's in front, Brigadier Sun right behind him? I think there is some chance that Brendan Barnes can do enough at the start to hold high voltage, but in saying that, Brigadier Sun's got options. He can, if he does hold up, he's the horse to beat. If he's sitting camped on high voltage, he's still the horse to beat. So I think it's probably 50-50. Um, Brigadier Sun's gonna have to be electric to hold high voltage. We just know, we know how quick he is off the arm. One thing's for sure is they're gonna come out super fast and there's gonna be glaps of plenty. And from that perspective, I see Just Desi actually finding that sort of leaders back or three peg spot. So I can certainly entertain him from a wagering perspective in the race. Gets Luke McCarthy, that's never a bad option. Um, it's a race that I think from an exotics point of view, it's a, a race to, to wager into around Brigadier's son for first and second. Looking at forgiving, if you forgive high voltage at Sydney work, you can certainly throw him in. Um, just as he is the intriguing runner for me and the, the value in the race. Okay. 53.9 was the winning time last year for Mallorca. There's every chance they're going to go a heck of a lot quicker here on Saturday night. Even if Brigadier's son does hold high voltage, would you want to hold high voltage? Because we know that it's, it's flat out or nothing for him. Yeah, 
I, I guess, like Ryan said, it's, it's a 50-50 call, but mm. um, you'd w- be wanting to try and back it off somewhere along the way. And of the two runs we've seen from Brigadier's son, he probably can do it out in front. If you watch his New Zealand form, he gets out quick enough that he probably can burrow through. I guess the, the only thing is that slingshot that horses can get from out wide, and if high voltage uses that, well, um, you know, you probably don't really want to engage too much in that opening half. So I guess from that perspective, you'll know after probably 600 metres um, what's going to happen in the last 1,000 metres. So who are you tipping? I'm tipping Brigadier's son on top, I think, with options. I think he takes the trail. That's how I'd like to see him driven, and I think from there he's the horse to beat because even if they run along, he just needs to get space. I think he gets to the passing lane at least. So uh, high voltage, I think his efforts in New South Wales are good enough. Throwing Little Bolt on the fence and throwing in Copperfield. Uh, He made good ground wide off the fence last time out, so um, his efforts have been really solid of late, and I think coming wide, if that pace is on, he can be one of the sweepers that sort of gets out of the ruck and, and can run home. So we'll throw him in as the fourth selection. OK, Ryan, you're with Brigadier's son as well. Yeah, hardest to beat, Chris. He has options. What he's done in the uh, the Peak of the Creek series was excellent. He's the one to beat here, clearly. I thought it would be a marker long race. If high voltage was to get parked, I think that's danger signs for him. But if he gets over, he's certainly going to run top four, you would imagine, in this field. OK, I'm going with six high voltage, but I suppose it comes with a caveat. If he leads, it's all or nothing. If he can't lead, I don't think he's got any chance. But if he's out in front, that's his favourite role. We know he can power up and run fast time. So 6189 for me. I'm going to go with uh, high voltage, hopefully to take it all the way in the Bill Dixon. Race number three is coming through at 643 on Saturday night. Race number four, the next of our features on Saturday night from Albion Park is the Trotters Spring Sprint. It's the Summer Carnival and we've got this spring trotting feature coming our way over the mile. So many of these horses back up from last Saturday night. This promises to be a good race because we've got fresh blood. A couple of Sydney siders make their way north for Jared Alchin, Regal Attire and Doff Your Cap. Both have got somewhat potentially tricky draws so it's going to be a very interesting race. Darren, as I come to you with the speed map here, Sir Fahrenheit won this race last year. He was well in the market. Majestic Simon started favourite last year. He's not backing up this year, obviously. But I think it's fairly open, this race, and it's going to be all important, that early speed map. Yeah, it certainly is. And from where they position, if the emergency is not required, we, we move in one, the emergency drawn three in the race. So, um, you know, the, the early speed, there's not a great deal of early speed, I thought, off the front line. Um, Sugar and Spice, she gets out really well. She can be a little bit chancy at times. Um, Kingdom Come, we saw him last week go back. That's his normal pattern. He can get out if, if required, So, um, but he's going to be taking a sit at some stage. I thought Majestic Harry had the opportunity to get across here. He led them up um, during the Winter Carnival in the Group 2 race and he found the front, admittedly that was gate one, and he was in front nearly all the way, just got grabbed in the closing stages by Credit Master on that occasion. I thought from in this race, under the conditions, Sugar and Spice might look for a trail, and that would allow Majestic Harry to get to the front. And then Humble Laddie comes across, probably applying the pressure again, like he did last week at the 2100, but at the mile, um, might be having a little bit more of a serious look. Regal attire, probably from five, gets across into the running line there somewhere. So from there, some of those wider ones. Van Sank, we know he can really run the gate, so whether they light him up from seven and and try to have a look. So from my perspective, I thought Majestic Harry could get to the front here. Sugar and Spice probably first to the pegs and and Humble Lad working across. Um, Not sure how you see that, Ryan, but in in terms of that front line speed, I wouldn't say there's a great deal of of real push button speed from these trotters. No, there's no beginner that's absolutely electric off the arm, Darren, I agree with that. I think you've got it right in the sense that Sugar and Spice is the horse to dictate the map. It seems to be a runner that can run the arm and then take a a trail on a suitable rival. I think Majestic Harry and Humble Lad are those two to to push hard to try and look for the top. But I think Pete can virtually decide who he sits on. Um, Van Sank, if they grab up and go back to last, it makes his task impossible. I think Adam Sanderson might get creative and just scoot across in behind him and try and find a spot in the running line. 
deep race, a race where you can't actually say there's too many horses that can't win. Mm. You know, we've got a 70 to 1 pop, Drawn Barrier 1, who loves the fence, who's a last start feature race winner in Kingdom Come, who can easily blow them out again if, if, if it was a hard fought, hard run contest. The two Jared Alchin runners are the intrigue for me. If Doff Your Cat had have drawn the front line, he would have been the one I would have stamped and said, this is the horse to beat. Inside back row, where if he stays there, he's going to be four pegs. Do they just stay there and drive for luck and, and push off when the time comes, if a gap comes? Or do they ease at the start and get straight into the running line? You know, if, if you do that, you've got to have a, a lap on them ability-wise to, to actually win the race. Hard race, you could come up with so many different scenarios of what's going to play out. One thing that I, I thought when I was assessing this race last week, if Sugar and Spice didn't blow up at the corner, I think she was going to go straight past yeah. them. So for me, it's the horse to beat. Yeah, it's an interesting race. Kingdom Come can lightning strike twice. Sugar and Spice was going to win last week, gets her regular driver back aboard on Saturday night. Majestic Harry Dismal last week, and he rebound off that. Regal Attire was disappointing last time out, so where's he at? Humble Lad's going to have to work. Van Saint, where does he get to from the draw? Doff your cap, I agree. Best horse in the race, but he's fresh up. We haven't seen him since the Tab Constellations. G up Netty going well, probably needs a little bit of luck. Red Castle to have a chance last week, and Sir Fahrenheit, he's just not going well. Who do you select to win this race? I've put Majestic Harry on top. I'm giving him a, a forgive for last week. He followed out Kingdom Come and he just got carted right back to the tail. When Nathan Dawson tried to look for a run, he ended up he was just running behind him. He knew his race was gone at the top of the straight and he never put, uh, pressured him to finish it off too hard because um, you know he was just too far back in the wash up of it. So I'm giving him a chance to, to spring back into form here from the from the gate, I think he gets across. Like I said, his winner form was good. He was a first up winner um, this campaign, and that was a good win yeah, as he well. Was excellent that night. So, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking that he can bounce back. I've got number eight, Doff Your Cap. The Alton runners sort of are the query, and Doff Your Cap in eight, you know, are they up here chasing that golden ticket into the Inter Dominion, or are they actually targeting this race? I think, um, you know, there could be a little bit to read into that. Kingdom Come. He might be an old boy now, but he still had the spring in his step last week and he darted through and knocked me out with Red Castleton. So I'm a little bit dirty on him, but like Ryan said, I, I think he can um, get that perfect trip. And like, like, again, like you said, Ryan, he's, got, he's a fence horse, he draws the fence, the speed will be on. So it works in his favour and I'll throw in Van Sank. But again, like we've agreed, where does he get to? Mm. Who are you with, Ryan? I'm going with my namesake, Sugar and Spice. Um, I like this mare, she's high speed, she can control the map. I think it's up to Pete to take the sit on the, on what he feels is the right horse. Um, yeah, that's, that's the way, but you can make a case for so many runners. Um, good race, deep race. Let's see what happens. Okay, you're hoping for a sweet victory there with Sugar and Spice. I I'm with Doff Your Cap. I did speak with Jared Elchin on radio during the week. He felt that this was the stronger of his two chances, but he is first up and he's got to overcome a tricky draw the inside of the second row, and there wasn't a great deal of options down in Sydney for him, so hence why they've brought him north. I'm going to go with him. Doff Your Cap, we've seen him previously, so we know what to expect. Sugar and Spice was going to win last week before making that break. Regal attire, I'm respecting the Sydney form and Van Sank. He finished at the rear of the field in this race last year, beaten favourite last week. The draws are real concern, but I still think uh, with that change up speed, he can be a threat. It's an interesting race. That's race four, the Trotters Spring Sprint. It's race number four on the program. And it's going to be a very even contest. Race number five on Saturday night is the Pride's Easy Feed Forever Gold Mares feature. It's a Group 2 race worth $50,000 and it's named in honour of after one of Queensland's finest mares in Forever Gold for Kylie Rasmussen and Darren Weeks. It's drawn together a very strong field. Unfortunately, we've got an early scratching. Last week's mares win a delightful reason has come out owing to vet's advice. But all in all, it's a very intriguing race. Darren, last year, Famous Short was able to take out this race for Team Dixon in what was her final race start because she was retired soon after. They went 53-2. This is going to produce a lot of speed this race, so it'll be interesting to see what sort of time they run. Yeah, I think they can probably better that time, just especially a few of these chances will want to get into the race at some stage as well, so that should generate some tempo. Um, I, I found this race really hard to map out. I don't think we learned anything out of last week, and 
the one learning point out of the race, delightful reason, doesn't go around, so she's scrapped. So that's just made, I think, the task even tougher of, of pulling this apart because a lot of the mares behind delightful reason, they let her walk and, uh, to be fair, I think quite a few of them were pretty poor. Um, but that's how it goes and they can bounce back as mares can. And um, with that in mind, looking at this map, it's just a, a little bit tricky. I think Little Bliss, um, she comes up for Troy Williams, I think from gate five. I think she probably has the early speed to get across. Jasper is a good s speed mare, but she's first up in gate one. So, well, Hark and Dream, she can fly the arm. So whether she's first across or not, uh, uh, better than Diamonds in gate two, she can get out. So, so I say, it's just, I found it really tricky. I thought Jasper would want to hold up and probably want to hold up to one of the stronger horses. And I thought that would be Little Bliss. So that's, that's how I worked it. I'm not entirely confident on that map at all. I'm not sure with that speed there, better than Diamonds, Wahak and Dream, what happens to Little Bliss. If she does get across, I think she's a really good chance, but uh, that's how I saw it. I'm not sure how you see it, Ryan, but yeah, it's, it's wide open for mine. Darren, have to agree. I, I think they can settle one of a hundred ways in this race. Jasper might be the key. You know, she does have good early speed, but she is first up, so I'm pretty sure that they will take a sit of some description. I think speed dating and Little Bliss, they're going to come out guns a-blazing to get over and to, to try and find the fence. For mine, they, they look hardest to beat because of their front row draws. From the mare's race last week, I can't be forgiving of Better Than Diamonds, Dance in the Sun and Fairy Tinkerbell. From my point of view, that week last week, I thought they all went unders, so this week mm -hmm. I can't be with them. For Fairy Tinkerbell to turn it around in the space of a week from Impossible. the... Impossible. Yeah, I think it's a task that's... Uh, too thing, hard. The other thing with Fairy Tinkerbell too, you go through her form, nearly all her wins are up on the front. Yeah. And yeah. from out there, it just makes it a really tough ask. And yeah. after last week, no. Yeah. She was woeful last week. It is difficult because East Coast representation here, Queensland, New South Wales and the Victorian. Sarah Ann, how do we rate this man? I rate her really highly, Chris, and I've actually put her on top. I think she's probably got the most versatility of a few of these. You go through a form, She's had two runs behind ladies in red in the Queen of the Pacific. Uh, last start, she got used up early and held on for a good second. I think she profiles with the right sort of setup for this race. I think the front line speed, she can push through at the start, end up in a, in a pretty handy position. So like I say, you go through that. Two back, she was used early from gate five. The other run behind ladies in red, she handed over and then there was another run in there. She ended up five back on the fence when Treachery got across and ladies in red one. So um, you take that form against these mares, I think she has, for me, has the most upside. So she's my on top selection, Sarah Ann. Well, just with Sarah Ann, Ryan, the fact that Delightful Reason comes out, were they originally happy with that draw, likely to run inside of the second row? Now that Delightful Reason comes out, the emergency gets the start, so she's two off the second row. Is that a help or a hindrance? It's a massive boost for her winning chances, Chris. Like Darren said, good early tempo here. They're going to run it hard. Great driver on Adam Sanderson. He loves to sit, sit back, stalk a position and come with one run. He's got great hands. She's, without a doubt, one of the clear winning hopes. As you said, the emergency getting the start boosts her chances. I think she would have been in a world of strife, three or four pegs, with the way the map was going to play out. I like her form lines, getting beaten 20 metres in hot time against ladies in red. It's pretty good for this sort of, sort of race. Little Bliss, she's one of mine though. Um, she's done some great things at Menangle of, of late. I can see her being the one to end up in front and uh, be very hard to run down. Okay, so you're tipping Little Bliss. Darren's with Sarah Ann. I'm with Little Bliss as well. Uh, I thought she did plenty last week at Menangle. Uh, that certainly solidified this trip. And the fact that it's a Group 2 feature, it's only going to add to her uh, resume in time to come. So 5, 3, 1 and 9 for me. Jasper, the fact that she attacks this race with no trial, is that a little concern? I think it is, but she hasn't been out for too long, I guess. Mm. Like she, That triad that she contested was in August, so it's not that far away she would have been ticking over at home um, but, but still it's a, it's a query enough in a feature race of this size so yeah okay well that's the forever gold it comes through as race five that starts the quaddy on saturday night start time for that feature at 751. the main event on saturday night is the group two aqua constructions queensland cup as darren outlined at the start of the show this is a golden ticket event for the inter dominion so connections of the winner 
They've got that option of tackling the big series in Melbourne coming up later this month. Last year, this was a terrific race. It was Mac Da Vinci beating Turn It Up. Here they are again, and they're both hard in the market. Guess who was third in this race last year? A little horse by the name of Majestic Cruiser. As we now know, he has since come out and won. The Blacks are fake and was second in the New Zealand Cup earlier this week. Finishing fourth was Blacks a Dance, and he's fresh off that victory last week in the Be Good Johnny Sprint. This is a deep race, and looking at the history from last year, this promises to be a very, very strong event. Certainly does, and if you look at that history, Chris, it reverses this year. Last year, Shane Graham drove Mac Da Vinci, landed Kane on Turn It Up. They switched seats this year, and uh, the gates are around the other way. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a great race. It's intriguing, and um, I think those big three there that you mentioned, Mac Da Vinci, Black Sedan's Turn It Up, they're, they're the big three, and, and pretty sure that the winner comes from one of them. How it plays out, uh, I guess is what we'll find out, but it's going to be a really interesting race for sure. Tab have got Turn It Up favourite. He's drawn the top of the track, gate seven. Do you have him leading in your speed map? No, I don't. I don't. I, he'll be getting across, but I think the retake will be on for Mac Da Vinci. I think they'll go hard enough early that um, Turn It Up can get across or even get in behind Mac Da Vinci. I don't think Turn It Up can lead and win, and at the price he is, I certainly don't want to be on him in that in that regard leading. Um, Star Galleria, probably a little bit of a spanner in the works in gate two, but we know how fast Turn It Up is. We saw Mac Da Vinci, he's a quick beginner. He led last week before handing over. I think whether it's a case of Turn It Up slots in behind Mac Da Vinci, or Mac Da Vinci can get out for a retake, but that, that's how I mapped it, and that's how I, I feel it can can play out early. I don't think any of those runners would be really wanting to chance their arm and um, you know it's it is chips in for a few of them but I don't think they can get across regardless so that's how I saw it. I saw you shaking your head a little bit there Ryan you you don't think that's going to be the case so but uh, you know that's that's how I see it and that's how I'm going to play the race. Let yeah. him have it. Uh, I, I do see it a little different. I see Turn It Up blasting over and Shane driving Turn It Up in Turn It Up's best interests. And I think if Pete comes early on Black Dance, I think he more than likely will let him slide and then take his shot to run a 26 qu six quarter and, and go past him. If Pete waits and doesn't come to the bell, well then I think Shane will hold. Um, so one of those, I think the big three, my most likely map is that Black Dance is in front of the bell, Turn It Up's camped on him, Mac Da Vinci's three pegs, and but I totally agree, one of those three is the winner of the race, without a doubt. I, I don't see Black Dance fighting the front at any stage. Interesting. Any stage. If Mac Da Vinci and Turn It Up are leader behind leader, there is no way on God's green earth they're going to hand over to Black Dance. One of them has to absorb the pressure, but I... I just can't see Black Sedance finding the peg line here. And I don't think Turn It Up can absorb the pressure that Black Sedans could give, which is why I think Mac Da Vinci is in front, because I think he... What I've seen of Turn It Up, and, and I was sort of last year, I, I felt the same way. He's going much better this year, I'll give him that, Turn It Up, than he was this time last year, but I still don't think he can do a solid opening half and finish it off. His best pattern is to uh, be coming off that speed so um, that's why I think the trail is the option and I guess that added sort of uh, layer over the top is that golden ticket so um, whether they want to that's what they're after or whether they're just happy of going around and winning this race so a few of them might be like I said that chips in mentality of let's get to the inner dominion because ultimately everyone loves to the opportunity to get a horse in an inner dominion but in this race I think Mac Da Vinci um, he's the one for me, purely off the fact that I think he, he gets out in front. Well, here's a fun fact for everyone. Mac Da Vinci, who is the defending champ, has the services of Leonard Kane. Leonard Kane has driven Mac Da Vinci three times, three victories. Are you surprised that the drivers have opted for the way they have with Leonard driving Mac Da Vinci and Shane going with Turn It Up? No, not at all. That's exactly what I thought would happen. Um, in some ways, I've I've thought Lenny probably should, considering his record with the horse, that he'd be the week in, week out driver when he's in Queensland. You know, they just, the horse flies for him. So, no, not at all. It's interesting that we all map the race differently mm. and we've, you know, got our own 
rationale as to what will happen, does that open the door for, if, if the big three cut at each other, does that open the door for a Will the Wizard or an Orphy Hustler to, to upset the party? I, I probably don't think so, but it uh, sounds like it's going to be a tactical race. Yeah, of those two you mentioned, uh, I think Northview Hustler is probably the most likely to, to be able to swoop over the top if they do cut at each other. Will the Wizard, where is he at the moment? I just I can't figure out for the life of me how he's actually travelling. Every, every race I go back and look at his, I think he's doing better than he is and then I'll give him a, you know, I'll give him a pass mark but he's just, I'm not sure what, what the story is there. But Northview Hustler will be first up, so off a bit of a fresh and really sharp trial. So. Um, yeah, for mine, if, if that scenario plays out, Ryan, he's the one that, that powers over the top. So who are you tipping? I'm tipping Mac Da Vinci on top. I think even if Turn It Up tries to take them all the way, um, I think that then opens it right up for Mac Da Vinci. But either way, I think he can trail or I think he can be in front. I think he's the horse to beat. Um, I think he's that first up run last week was good. Another week under Shane Graham's care, he was sort of first up into that race uh, from Sydney with him. So. Um, that's that's for me. I think Black's a dance. He's going to work, but I'll put him in there. It's number seven, turn it up for third, and like we mentioned, Northview Hustler. He's the he's the swooper for me. You're with turn it up. I am with turn it up, but that's based on the the, the premise that Black's a dance. When he comes, he comes hard. Mm -hmm. Shane takes the sit, and then uh, he stalks him in the trail. I'm a, I'm a really big fan of turn it up. What he, what this horse has done in Queensland's been phenomenal. He always gives you a great run for his money, but in saying that, the, the odds on quote, it's, it's not uh, acceptable from a betting point of view, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm going to go with Mac Da Vinci. I think it's going to be the same result as last year. Mac Da Vinci beating Turn It Up. Black Sedance is a clear third pick. I'll be stunned if one of the big three don't walk away with the trophy here on Saturday night and Will the Wizard gets that easy run on the peg, so he's a minor play. So it's going to be a fascinating race, no doubt about it. It's the Queensland Cup, open class race, always plenty of excitement with these races. We go over 2,138 metres and start time is at 8.52. Race nine on Saturday night is the Sunshine Stars Yearling Sale three roll Phillies Classic. It's a group three feature and this promises to be a good race as well. Last year, it was a blowout result. Lady Ivana at good odds scoring. I don't think we're going to get a blowout result. That's the way I look at it. I'll be interested in the thoughts of the guys here. Darren, it looks fairly clear cut. I think the major players are going to be right where they need to be. Yeah, that, that's right, Chris. And um, from the early, we go from the mile last week, they were all over 1,600, up to 2,100 this week. That sorts probably a few of these out a little bit, but still they're going to be wanting to get forward and get in that handy position. Um, from a mapping perspective, uh, number four, it's back page news. She's a really fast mare off the arm, and I can, I can see her getting across. I don't think Racy Roxy has the speed to hold her out. I'm a socialite. Not sure exactly how quick she can get across, but she goes better off a trail anyway. So if she does get across Racy Roxy, she probably hands up anyway. But the way I see it, I thought it's back page news could get across. She was good. Um, first up winner, three starts back over this trip, the 2100. So if she gets across, she's going to be able to uh, hold the early challenge, I thought. And that probably puts Uptown Beach Girl as that early challenger. Racy Roxy on the fence, I thought, if Uptown Beach Girl comes across, that gives I'm a socialite the perfect 1-1 one, one sit. So that's going to be ideal. She's notorious. She can probably throw a little bit of a spanner in the work. She can fly the gate, but out there in gate six, you know, they'd be wanting to be reasonably confident of landing a spot if they're going to light her up early. So can certainly foresee if they do have a crack that she could get across, but I can't see her finding a position if she does. So I, I think it'd be in her best interest to ease at the start. So. That's how I sort of see them in the early stages. That probably puts Magical Maya, pretty handy 2100 metre filly, in a little bit of bother. Ryan, what are your thoughts on Magic Moment? The filly that comes up from the New England area, they think plenty of this filly. They took it to Melbourne for a shot at the Victoria Rogues. Here she is lining up in this feature on Saturday night. She creates plenty of intrigue here. Yeah, she's a, a solid customer that comes to town. She's a gate speed runner, mm. and she certainly adds some intrigue. I think Racy Roxy has surprisingly we've all underestimated how quick out she is in, in Melbourne she got out really well in one of the feature races down there magic moment it's back page news uptown beach girl I think they're all gonna run the arm I have no idea how they're gonna settle so it's a bit of a raffle from a form perspective for this race for me I came back to the fact that I just love what I'm a socialite's been doing here in Queensland I think the 2100 meter suits 
whoever's going to get that charmed leaders back trip, I think is going to perhaps in run be the hardest to beat. But um, for me, the way I look at the race, if they go too hard, I'm a socialite, might be the one to capitalise. Yeah, I think it's a tough race. I'm going to tip Racy Roxy. Thought she was good last week. That was against the boys. So back against her own sex here on Saturday night and she's got the right gait. She, she's the horse to beat for mine. Uh, I'm a socialite, low flying. She'll race really well. Uptown Beach Girl is just being a monster at the moment. And I think she'll be very competitive. Magical Maya has to be better. I think she will be, and the trip is going to be more beneficial for her. So it's a, an interesting race. One, two, five, eight. I know you're keen on I'm a socialite, Darren. You've been uh, waxing lyrical about this filly for some time. Narissa McMullen, first time drive behind I'm a socialite. No concern, but it, it is something a little different. Yeah, it is, but I think if the early speed's on, and like I think it will be, I think if she stays out of that early battle, that's her best chance. She's, she's got a really good finishing burst. Last week she got probably one position further back than she was going to be in the run, and she was charging home, only just narrowly missed out on beating uh, Tim's a trooper in that race. So she gets back to her own sex. She's flying this man. She's only raced at the mile in Queensland. So eight starts Queensland, only at the mile, three wins. Five wins in WA, all at the middle trip. So no concerns about the trip. And the trip is the big concern that I have for quite a few in this race. Racy Roxy's the other one who can handle it, but her wins in the Southeast Oaks, she had a three fence trip in that uh, 2100 race. Another one she took out was the Breeders Classic. She did that from gate 12. So Uptown Beach Girl, she's 0 and 4 at the trip, so, and she's probably gonna have to be working. And it's back page news. Well, she's got a couple of wins. She was a winner first up, as I mentioned. So all in all, I'm a socialite. I think she just sits off. I'm really keen on her chances. So two, one, five, and four for me. And you're tipping I'm a socialite, right? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with her. I think Darren's identified she is low flying. Tough race. I think there is six legitimate winning hopes and it's only a nine horse field. So I think you make a case for most of them. Um, Probably Uptown Beach Girls are uh, a filly that I absolutely love, but I do think her best trip is the mile. You know, we've seen she's zero from four at the middle trip. I think for her to win this race, she'd have to get control, and I'm not sure that's going to happen. Okay. Uh, for those that are keen on I'm a socialite, and she's going to have plenty of fanciers here on Saturday night, maybe another angle that you can take. Watch Tim's a trooper who's engaged in that Breeders' Blue final, a Group 1 race at Menangle on Saturday night. If he comes out and wins that race, he certainly franks the form for I'm a socialite. So maybe that's another angle to take with that filly. And uh, as I said, she's gonna have plenty of admirers for sure in certain I'm a socialite. Interesting race there for the three-roll filly. Small field, like Ryan said, a stack of hopes. Race nine coming through at 9.57. Race 10 on Saturday night, again for the Sunshine Stars yearling sale. This one for the three roll Colts and Geldings, a Group 3 feature. It's a small field, but it's going to be a very competitive race. Last year, complete blowout. It was uh, Montana Flash scoring at odds of $61 last week. Brendan Barnes had the winning drive for trainer Daryl Graham. It's going to be very interesting to see how this race plays out. Fresh blood here, Darren, with Argyle. Lincoln Farms, they're up and about this week. Copy that, claiming his second New Zealand Cup. They uh, race Argyle, Mark Ducks has now been entrusted with, its, uh, with this three-year-old. They brought him across for the Victoria Derby. Things didn't go to plan down there, but he's a, uh, a very interesting runner here. Yeah, he certainly is, and he's obviously got you know, enough ability that they, to warrant coming over for a tilt of that series. Um, I just I found it hard just to line him up. I'm not sure sort of where he sits in this, and um, listening to an interview you did with his trainer, Mark Ducks, um, happy enough to come into this race first up, but also saying that he's keen not to press forward early, that he's quite happy to settle, which, um, you know, I guess we're then relying on how well he can finish off in the tempo of this race, which to me, I, I think it's a race that's not going to generate a lot of tempo, but quite often as can be the case, you say that and they're the races where they go look at his split and throw you out the window. So. Um, with that in mind, it really is a tricky little race. And like we said, or like I said anyway, with that Phillies race, the step up to the 2100 can be, you know, it's only an extra 480 metres from the mile, but gee, it finds a lot of them out, yeah. especially in these bigger races. So um, from a mapping perspective, I thought Ultra Reverie, he's a, a really good gate speed horse. I thought he probably takes the early shot, but I don't think they want to lead throughout with him. And I thought that, Away we go, just sort of tucks, lets him go, and then speeds around and takes over. Um, Harry Kane does have speed. He led up uh, 
a race just recently out of the blue. I thought uh, he had no chance of leading in that race, but he led them up. So he could throw a little bit of a spanner in the works, I guess. But um, I can see away we go going to the front. Having heard what Mark Ducks has said, I think where do you find the chair horse out of that? Poor old Misty Creek probably ends up having to do the, the bullocking work there and, and sitting outside the leader. Future assured, they might take an early shot for him with him, but uh, we saw him let Captain Shuffles go in the triad final at the 2100 where he had gate one, so you wouldn't expect they'd be wanting to blast across from gate seven. Um, so if away we go gets to the front, I, I think it's just a matter of fill in positions and see what the tempo brings. Ryan, how do you see it? I think Darren's nailed the map in this race early, from an early perspective. I think that's how they'll settle after four or 500 metres. One little spanner in the works I could see is that they'll balance up, but then Trent Dawson might just press the button, tip Future Assured three wide and said, I'm taking the front. And that's sort of perhaps he could be in front at the bell. Um, and if that's the case, it's going to be truly run. Argyle's the key runner, there's no doubt about it. You look at his New Zealand stats, they're very solid. Uh, and as Darren outlined, they thought enough of him to bring him across for a shot at the Victoria Derby. So uh, he tackles this race, a feature race, no trials. So Mark Ducks outlined that he was happy with the condition that he's in. So I think he's the key runner. I've got him on top. Uh, future assured, I thought was terrific during the peak of the creek, heat and final. We always have faith was going to finish a lot closer last week. Lock wheels in the home straight. So uh, just forget that run. He's come back a lot better this time in. And away we go. He's a Group 1 winner, and he was a lot better last week. So it's a tricky race here. I'm going 5 seven, six, two. Darren, how did you go? Yeah, I was really taken with the way we goes run last week. He was four fence, and then when Talia got him to the outside, he really finished off nicely. He was only beaten six metres. And back to the middle trip sort of stats, he's got two wins at the 2100, one of those leading into a heat of the triad final. He then drew badly in that triad final. Um, he's the only runner in the field with a win at the middle trip and he has two of them. So I've got to go back to that. And with the fact that I think he gets to the front, that, that gives him top billing for mine, future assured. I like the angle you're working there, Ryan, that they might just take a, you know, an, a, a middle, middle stage as sort of attack move. Um, we always have faith in for third and out of revelry if he gets that peg trip behind away we go but yeah Argyle certainly right in the mix mm. I just didn't know where to assess him in regards to what I've seen. Ryan you found away we go as well? Yeah Chris I think this horse just might be getting his mojo back I've actually liked what he's done smothered up and working home at his last two starts four and five starts ago he was sort of we weren't sure where he was at but I just think there's signs of life there and he might be ready to go this horse I have a lot of time for we always have faith I think the middle trip the, with his style and his pattern, it should be to his liking, despite being zero from three at the distance. I can certainly see him, if it's a truly run affair, him being in the finish. I want to take on Argyle and Future Assured at their short quotes. I really was underwhelmed with what Argyle produced in Victoria. But in saying that, a few of the Ray Green runners went unders in Victoria. We, you know, copy that was not the same horse that he is in New Zealand. So perhaps that's, uh, if you want to be forgiving, you could go there. Um, future assured, perhaps he's got the most talent of any runner in this race, but um, he comes up with that, that bad gate. Yep. Okay, it's a good race, race, three, uh, race uh, 10 for the three-year-old Colts and Gilding. It's worth staying up for, 10.26 is race number 10, so make sure you uh, keep yourself awake and tune in for that race. It's a good race for the three-year-old Colts and Geldings. Let's find out what some of our leading drivers think ahead of Saturday night with their drives. Nathan Dawson and Trent Dawson. Nathan Dawson with a busy night in front of him on Saturday night, driving in just about every race on the program, and he joins us now. Nathan, appreciate the time. No, good to be on, Chris. Subtle Delight Race 1, likely to go off here at big odds. Do you give him any sort of hope? Yeah, you know, he, he's had a bit of time off, and um, each run he's getting better, but, um, you know, he's starting to work back towards his best, but whether, you know, it's a week or two early, um, you know, time will tell. It's a strong field that first race, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. You know, he's probably looking for a little bit easier company, maybe like a veteran or something. I think he'll strike in. Mm, Uncle Shank, the key runner there, but he's got the inside of the second row and it's 2,138 metres. So interesting race to start the program. Race two, Bonnie Prince Louis. He's second up. Any expectations? Yeah, I think he should be near his best on Saturday night. Um, he had a few trials and a run last week, so... Fitness-wise, um, he should be pretty close to the mark, I think. Can he lead this field? 
Yeah, there's a bit of speed underneath us. Um, you know, call me Keith gets out well, and so does the three horse. So uh, we'll just have to come out hard and see what happens early. 2,138 metres. Any issues there? No, I don't think it worries him that much. Um, he's won over it before and run good time as well, so not too concerned by the trip. OK, so if he brings his best, he's good enough to score there? Yeah, I think if he brings his best, he's probably the one to beat. All right. Race three, you're on the emergency. Captain Nemo, probably a little stiff to miss out here. If he gains a start, he's he's not the worst. Yeah, I was surprised to see um, a few horses get a start ahead of him, um, to be honest. Uh, yeah, last run he was pretty good. Uh, before that, he had pretty good form a while back. So, you know, he's a bit stiff to miss out, but if he gets a start, uh, start you know, they'll know he's there. OK. Race four, one of our features, the Group 2 Trotters Sprint. Big expectations last week for Majestic Harry. On paper, grossly disappointing. Is that fair or unfair? No, I think that was fair. Um, you know, we were all pretty disappointed with his run last week, but, uh, you know, they said he pulled up well and they should be better this week. So maybe it was just second up syndrome or, or something like that, but um, I'm sure he'll be better. Mm. You expected more last week, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, I expected, you know, to be going in the finish. Um, yeah, with them, especially the way the race was run. But, um, you know, I struggled throughout the run and had nothing there at the finish. Mm. The Sydney Trotters, they're the key runners this week. Uh, regal attire, first Albion Park start. We've seen Doff your cap, and he's first up since the carnival. So they're the class runners, aren't they? Yeah, they are. You know, there's also Shannon's horse in it who run a good race last week and plenty of others. So it's a nice little race. Um, you know, just need a bit of luck. OK, race five, the Group 2 Forever Gold. Speed dating. Pulled off the big victory last week, taking the peak of the creek. Can she double down and do it again? Yeah, I can't see why not. Um, she's in good form and she's proven herself last couple of starts. So she can get a good trip. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see her get up again. Where does she sit gate speed wise, drawn gate four here with, you know, speed to your inside and to your outside? Um, well, last week from the second line, um, she cruised out pretty good on the helmet. Um, I didn't have to ask her, so I'm sure there's a plenty there if I need it. Last week, you surprised everyone. You gave us all the tip that uh, she was going to run a bold race because you could easily have stuck with taking care of business. You opted for speed dating, and she got, this, got the, the spoils. Did she surprise you in any way, shape, or form last week? Not really. Um, I drove her in the heat, and uh, I was super happy with her run. Um, you know, they went good time, probably just slower than the first heat. But, um, you know, she come from a long way back and only just got beat, so... I thought with the good barrier, um, you know, being up handy, that, you know, she was well in it. Yeah, it's a good quality field, this. Couple of quick questions. Jasper drawn gate one fresh up. You expecting a big run? Yeah, for sure. You know, Grant wouldn't have it in it if it wasn't happy. So you got to you know, put her in the mark and uh, expect a good showing from her. Little Bliss comes up from Sydney, boasting really good credentials. You've raced against this mare with speed dating. She looks talented. Yeah, she does. A uh, nice little mare. And, Troy wouldn't be up here if he didn't think he was a good shot, so she's another one to follow. All right, and Sarah Ann comes up from Victoria, so she certainly muddies the water as far as the form is concerned as well. Yeah, there is. You know, there's a few good ones in there throw in the works that we don't know too much about, so I mean, as I said, I wouldn't change my drive for any. All right, and Fairy Tinkerbell. She couldn't have been... Well, she can't be as bad as what she was last week, this week. No, you wouldn't think so. Um, you know, everyone expected her to win last week, and she was pretty disappointing, so... She should be better. All right, but you're expecting speed dating to run another big race. Yeah, I can't see why not. If I can give her a good trip, she'll be finishing off again. OK, well, that's speed dating there in the Forever Gold, the Group 2 Mayor's feature. Race number six on Saturday night, Katacha Man. He's drawn out, early scratching lyrical genius. So extra's drawn barrier one. Is he the horse to beat? Yeah, he's flying at the moment, Um, you know, and he's got the good draw, so... He's definitely the one to beat, but, you know, our horse can run a good race as well, um, just whether he's up to them. Do you poke forward or do you just grab up straight away? Uh, we'll just float out and try and find a spot. He likes a bit of high speed, so if we go straight back, we no hope. Sure. Race 7, the Group 2 Queensland Cup, Warfare. He's stepping up in grade, but he, he's, um, he's very competitive, this horse. He is, you know, Greg Franklin does a good job with his horses. Um, you know, it's fair to say he's up in grade and whether he can handle it, um, I think we'll find out after Saturday night. How does this race play out Play out early in your opinion with Mac Da Vinci drawn one, turn it up in seven? There's going to be good early pressure here. Yeah, there's going to be good pressure throughout the race. Um, I think it'll be a pretty hot run race. So if we can just you know get to the fence pretty soon and follow them through, um, 
everything goes our way, we might be running into somewhere. Mm, Blacks at Ants won't sit for long, will he? He'll no. be making a move quickly. Yeah, that's right. You know, he'll get making and make it a staying contest. All right, so with any luck, he can certainly feature warfare. He is a last start winner, as he uh, proved last week, scooting the sprint lane to take out that race. So that's going to be a, a very entertaining event, the Queensland Cup. I'm expecting high pressure there. Race number eight, Fairish Day In. She's yet to strike here at Albion Park, but she's drawn perfectly here on Saturday night. Can this be her night? Um, I'd like to think so. She's um, fresh up off a bit of a sickness, whether she's a run short. Um, it's the only con concern, but... She's got the good draw, so hopefully we don't have to do too much work and can get a good position. There's no standout on paper. No, there's really not. Um, you know, the mayor's races have probably been a little bit down of late, so we thought it was our time to come in and see if we can snag one. All right, well, that's fair each day in. Race 9, Group 3 feature for the three-year-old fillies. Uptown Beach Girl is your drive here. You know this, filly. She's going super. Yeah, she's flying at the moment. Um, her run last week was terrific. Nothing went her way, so... You know, if we can get her a bit of luck this week, um, I actually think she'll take a bit of running down. Is there a chance she might even find top here? Well, we'll be pressing hard. Um, you know, she's proven herself that, you know, she can run a good mile outside them at good speed. So, you know, they're going to be silly to want to try and hold us. They'll have every shot if they don't. 2100's no issue? No, nah, not at all. Um, she's raced it and won it before, so not too concerned about that. Are you more worried about Racy Roxy or I'm a socialite? Both are going well. Both going well, um, you know, and probably Racy Roxy's got the good draw. Dough, um, so she's probably the one who's, you know, with a draw on her side is going to be hard to beat. Okay. And your final drive is in the Group 3 three-year-old Colts and Geldings feature. He's a newcomer, but he's a very interesting horse, Argyle. Now part of the Mark Duck stable for Lincoln Farms. He was brought over for a shot at the Victoria Derby. He's now here in Brisbane. How do you rate this guy? Um, I don't know a lot about him, but I went through and did a bit of form, and he looks like quite a nice horse. So, you know, it's a good race on Saturday night, but I wouldn't say it's the strongest three-year-old we've had. Do we take a vote of confidence in the fact that Mark Ducks brings him straight to Albion Park in a feature race and he hasn't trialled? I think so. Um, you know, he's got to be happy with it, so he's doing it for a reason. Mm. 2,138 metres might find a few of these out as well. Yeah, for sure. And generally the Kiwis, um, you know, they like the longer trips. They're used to it, so I'm um, not too worried. It's another solid book on Saturday night. Which one are you most looking forward to? Um, I like Uptown Beach Girl and Speed Dating. OK, we'll take the tip with both of them. Nathan, as always, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. Thank you. Trent Dawson is now joining us to go through his book of drives on Saturday night, night two of the Summer Carnival, and he's with us now. Trent, appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. Thanks for having me. Airtime goes around in race two, shooting for the hat-trick, but he's got to overcome a wide draw in gate seven. How do you rate his chances? Oh, yeah, like he was flying there two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and um, won the two in a row, and... Probably a couple of the better runs he's put in for me. Um, unfortunately, he just had a little bit of a hoof trouble the, the following week and we had to scratch him. Um, so he's drawn out against seven again t on Saturday night. Um, it, it probably makes it tough for him. They're not easy races, he's won a lot of them sort of come down to barrier draws. But, um, you know, his work's been good since. Um, you know, he's, he's got over that little hoof problem. So um, we're going to need a bit of luck from seven. But It's quite a deep field, isn't it? There's a number of good chances here. Yeah, you know, that grade, is, they're always sort of ever reliable, those grades. You sort of, there's no one you really like write, write off as an easy beat. But um, yeah, well, you know, if we get a slice of luck and, you know, something happens and we can, we can get a better trip than what it probably looks like we will on paper, um, you know, he'll be there about for a chance. All right, well, that's uh, airtime there in race two. Let's go across to the Queensland Cup race seven. This week you're driving Will the Wizard. Last week you had the, uh, the victory behind Black Sedans in the Be Good Johnny Sprint. This is not the worst draw here. The inside of the second row following out Mac Da Vinci. No, no, it's uh, like I think Mac Da Vinci's probably on the way up. Um, you know, he'll, he'll probably get crossed there. There's a bit of toe out wider. Um, but it's still, it's going to be a good draw. I'm sure they'll go hard. And, um, you know, I think Will the Wizard went quite good last week. Um, you know, he's getting home. And, you know, like it was probably a, a bit of a muddly run run race last week when Black Sedans won in the middle section, sort of. Um, and But it, there was a few that actually got home really well. So uh, I would expect Will the Wizard, I, I know he's not like in the market particularly, but um, I think he's probably a, a rough chance if things break his way. Yeah. What were your thoughts on Black Sedans sitting behind him for the first time last week? Oh, well, he's, he's sort of a funny horse to sit behind. He, 
he probably didn't feel that great until the last 200 actually and um, as a lot of good horses do you know they, they get someone near them and they go into overdrive and I, I don't think we got to overdrive but um, you know he just gave you that feeling that the, the, the more they wanted to come at him the more he was just kind of pull away so uh, you yeah, know it was, it was quite a good feel uh, particularly the last 200. Okay just looking at this race potentially it looks like it's going to generate some good pressure so that's a good thing for you just doing nothing on the inside there. Well, yeah, I mean, there's no real standout. I, I wouldn't say there's a horse that's like, like just going to go there and lay over the field. So, um, you know, like, and there's probably a few that'll have to put themselves into the race at some point too. So it, it'll be good. I mean, where we are, we'll probably just get to get to watch it unfold and our hands will be tied a little bit. Um, but hopefully the gaps, gaps come at the right times. Okay, race nine, the Group 3 Phillies feature, Magical Amaya. Were you disappointed last week? Yeah, I was, Chris. Um, we sort of had, got a look, look into it, and she had a bit of a bit of a cough the next day, and um, we sort of treated it, treated her for that, and tried to tried to um, do, do the best we can. I, th I think we worked her this morning, and she she was, um, you know, she felt quite good again. Um, you know, we, we we tried to tried to get her over the cough, and um, you know, I think I think she's, you know, since, since sort of Monday, Tuesday, it's really settled down. So. Um, um, you know, like I was disappointed on Saturday night, but I think there was an explanation for it as it turned out the next day. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're sort of, we're, we're drawn there to the eight. Um, it's a tough field again, but, uh, you know, we, we probably won't be overtaxing early and middle, middle race like we did on Saturday night. So it's probably a good, good race where she might have to con, you know, conserve a little bit through the, the early stages. And, um, you know, I, I think she's, I think she's going to be well enough at, on Saturday night that I think we can... You know, with a bit of luck, maybe we can uh, earn some earn a big check. The extra distance should suit her. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a few in that race that you know, uh, definitely on Saturday night were like they outpointed her. There was a couple that that she raced against that were much better than she was. Um, but that was over a mile, uh, and now we're back to 2100, and uh, she does seem to like that distance. So. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully the others don't like it that much. Yeah, uh, race ten, the Group Three feature for the Colts and Geldings. Future assured, backing up, coming out of the peak of the Creek Series. Were you happy overall with these efforts? Yeah, I mean, we we stung hard on um, Saturday night. I mean, you got to got to look back on it, and we we kind of, um, you know, we basically went 52 two days apart, um, twice in the week. So that that's you know, I was pretty proud of his effort. He got a little bit hot after we burned him up out the gate, um, and didn't quite want to come back to me. Um, so I think I think we've sort of made a couple of gear changes this, for this week. We've taken the dollies off him, and um, we'll prob probably look to look to not probably be as aggressive at the start as what we were on uh, last Saturday night. Um, obviously, the draw the draw dictates that a bit to us too. So, um, but yeah, we'll just we'll just play it by ear. But I, I actually I was really surprised. I I, I wasn't over committed to uh, to racing on Saturday night with him. Um, uh, but he, he came through the run really good. Uh, yeah, I was, I was really surprised that he got over the run as well as he did. Uh, he's been really good this week. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really, really quite happy with him. And I think, he, I think he's, you know, I raced him aggressive last week, but, it, but he's, he doesn't probably necessarily need to be driven that way all the time. Yeah, he's quite good off the pace. What about the step up in trip? Is that a concern? Uh, not if I get him to relax. Um, and I, I have been pretty good with that, getting him to relax all year. Um, you know, I think on Saturday night I just just sort of asked him for that bit much early. Um, like we had to do it. You know, we were we were in the position where we we, we wanted to take our shot and we only come up a metre short. Um, but you know, over the distance, if we if we get him to relax, he'll um, he'll find the line, no worries. And um, if we if we can put him on a helmet on Saturday night and and save him up for so, you know the last five or six hundred metre dash at him, I think he'll um, I think he'll be pretty good. Is he the pick of your drives? Yeah, I think so at this point. Yeah, like he he's the one I. In, in my head, I feel the others need a bit of luck, but I, I can sort of picture how it might, you know, the, we still need luck, but I can, I can picture what that luck might need to look like, whereas <laughs> the others, I don't know what they need. Um, we're just going to have to play it by ear. Hey, really appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. Uh, thanks, Chris. Time now for a best bet or two, plus a quaddy on Saturday night. 11 races, so there's plenty to devour on the weekend. But I'm going to go first. I'm going to make everyone wait until the final race on Saturday night. It's the two-year-old feature, and if you cast your mind back 12 months, what two-year-old won this two-year-old feature? It was Leap to Fame.
He's now the best horse in the country as it stands. And I think the Dixon Stable have a, a very strong hand to play here with bold medley Jujon. He's first up. He's only had the one start in New Zealand, a sweet Lou uh, youngster, but he's a big, strong, imposing type. I like what I saw in that trial, and I think he's ready to strike fresh up. I think in six to 12 months' time, we'll hear a lot more about this guy, bold medley Jujon. So he's my best bet, race 11, number four. There's my quaddy thoughts, playing a little wide there in that opening leg, standing out so extra. The big three in the Queensland Cup. And in that last leg, the, the race for the mares there, one, two, three, nine, ten. So seventy-five dollars for a hundred percent of the dividend. Ryan, your best bet. Chris, I've thrown in so extra. He's be very short in the market, but sweet. I think he can be a, a multi-anchor for players on the night. Uh, he should be leading. Should be winning. Okay, Darren, your best bet. Yeah, I'm really keen. I'm a social. I've been really taken with what she's doing. Ron Salas team flying. Um, I think she gets the perfect trip. Just camped in behind the speed and can go bang. So race nine, number two for me. And uh, from a quaddy, there's my numbers, $36 for 100%. You're playing skinny this week, Ryan. Last week you play, uh, played very wide. This week you're playing skinny. Ah, oh, it's just how I see it, Chris. I think you can <laughs> stand so extra out. In the last leg, actually, I'm really keen that the visiting filly, Miss Serena, can lead all the way and uh, stomp out a big time. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a multi on Saturday night as well. I'm going to take so extra into I'm a socialite into bold medley juju and I'm going to take all of our three best bets hopefully uh, get a nice little price there with a, a multi and hopefully count the cash at the end of the night it is going to be a super night of racing on Saturday night 11 races and we start at 5:42 we look forward to seeing you trackside there at the creek this weekend